In 2016, around April of 2016, I composed a business plan and I showed it to a woman who was discussing her relationship with her country of origin, which is Haiti. It was a very specific business plan that I had hoped would assist her with some problems she had had previously in trying to do uh, cross-border work, shall we say, connected to relief efforts in Haiti. At some point, she told me that she had another business associate from Haiti, and they decided to pursue a different course of action. But I believed that the business plan I had come up with was very practical, specific to Chicago, but not exclusive to Chicago. At some point later, I ended up sharing the information connected to this business plan with two different groups of people. And none of them, neither of them got back to me and let me know that they had any interest in doing anything with it specifically. This is part of a pattern that's been going on for several years where people say they want something or they say they have a need. And then I present a proposal and they just conveniently don't get back to me. And then anywhere from a year to several years later, that ends up appearing in another context, usually via derivative association with the people to whom I directly gave it at the beginning. The business plan discussed incorporating as a specific kind of corporation because the understanding was that it was going to be involved in transnational relief efforts. And under the terms of this incorporation model, it would be possible for people that were citizens of another country to be able to participate as business people in the corporation. It was completely legal, it was completely legitimate, and it would allow the possibility for people that were citizens of foreign nations to be considered shareholders as well as potential executives within the legal incorporation within the United States. Now, there is plenty of legal uh, consideration around issues regarding liability uh, that I've encountered, even specifically connected to Texas and island nations. And this concept of ultimately what uh, jurisdiction is, if there's a claim, including a claim regarding any sort of medical problems, um, any claims regarding environmental issues. But that was in Chicago. In March of 2017, I came up with another business plan. And it was different because it was specific to the context of Texas and the needs I had with the people in Texas at that time who were in a domestic violence shelter. And I had been told that it would be appreciated for a public presentation to people that were recipients of a food bank associated with a nonprofit organization across the street from the domestic violence shelter. This business plan discussed specifically that the Texas Constitution had specific rights enumerated in the Bill of Rights that said that what was going on in terms of the manners in which these women and children were being used at this domestic violence shelter for financial gain of other people that did not acquire their informed consent beforehand, did not provide them with any record of what the investments were with those people's uh, and our identity or our assets, as well as give us information about how we could reinvest whatever our contributions were to their endeavors in our own lives and our own resource acquisition without having to be posited as if we were in some sort of emergency situation or some sort of calamity so that we could be uh, made available for organizations to claim credit for providing services to people so disadvantaged. I cited specific elements of the Texas Constitution, and I talked about a different and distinctly different incorporation model that would allow for us to be able to network with other organizations in order to figure out a way to negotiate terms of how our human capital contributions would be used by them and how we would be restituted for them. This is before we had to start wearing masks. Because during that time frame, and for two years afterwards, several people, including myself, were put in positions where we were constantly being taken pictures of. And pictures and recording equipment was constantly being used while we were in the public. Or while we were in public spaces that may or may not have been able to avail themselves of the tax benefits of incorporation within those jurisdictions. 
Pictures were taken. Voice files were obtained. Sometimes we might have a, a physical encounter with security or a police officer letting us know it's time for us to clear out while they registered the transaction on their phone. Now we all wear masks. Or we get fined. Right? McCulloch versus Maryland. 4 W H E A T period 316-1819. Although among the enumerated powers of government, we do not find the word bank or incorporation, we find the great powers to lay and collect taxes to borrow money, to regulate commerce, to declare and conduct a war, and to raise and support armies and navies. The sword and the purse, all the external relations, and no inconsiderable portion of the industry of the nation are entrusted to its government. It can never be pretended that these vast powers draw after them others of inferior importance, merely because they are inferior. Such an idea can never be advanced. But it may be with great reason contended that a government entrusted with such ample powers on the due execution of which the happiness and prosperity of the nation so vitally depends must also be entrusted with ample means for their execution. The power being given, it is in the interest of the nation to facilitate its execution. It can never be their interest and cannot be presumed to have been their intention to clog and embarrass its execution by withholding the most appropriate means. Throughout this vast republic, from the Saint Croix to the Gulf of Mexico, from the Atlantic to the Pacific, revenues to be collected and expended, armies are to be marched and supported. The exigencies of the nation may require that the treasure raised in the north should be transported to the south, that raised in the east conveyed to the west, or that this order should be reversed. Is that construction of the Constitution to be preferred, which would render these operations difficult, hazardous, and expensive? Can we adopt that construction, unless the word imperiously require it, which would impute to the framers of that instrument, when granting these powers for the public good, the intention of impeding their exercise, but withholding a choice of means? If indeed such be the mandate of the Constitution, we have only to obey but that instrument does not profess to enumerate the means by which the powers it confers may be executed, nor does it prohibit the creation of a corporation if the existence of such a being, uh, of such a being be essential to the beneficial exercise of those powers. It is then the subject of fair inquiry how far such means may be employed. I contend it is completely unacceptable that Congress intentionally extorted the people of this country and created a synthesized simulation that we are under a health emergency so that they can use us in the processes of incorporating the government outside of the jurisdiction of the Constitution. And that's exactly what's happening right now. There was no reason that my business plan could not have been moved on with my colleagues in Chicago any more than it's no reason my business plan could not have been moved on in Texas before I was kidnapped for 10 days and tortured and ignored for two years. There's no reason the government should say that they have an entitlement to people's payrolls so that they can defer taxation until the person who puts their signature on the corporate releases is out of office and supplanted by someone else. We are not a part of the Trump organization and Congress had no right to try to usurp the process of criminal jurisprudence in this country if indeed he was to be held accountable. If he needed to be impeached, then they should have found precedent in understanding what the impeachable offenses were. And that is why the crimes of the former administration and those who were members of it from either party need to be held accountable. Are you going to find me? I kept the mask on this time. 
Are you going to let us take it off? Or are we supposed to cover our faces in shame at what we let you get away with the rest of our lives as long as we have them? You had no right to extort us into sexual financial performance in order to pay off your campaign contributors. 